Hey guys, Janice here. Sorry for this late release. My area has been without power for a few days now. Everything just got turned back on yesterday, so I was able to finish filming last night. So without further ado, today I want to share with everyone my two favorite recipes. As some of you may already know, I've been committed to a plant-based lifestyle now for quite a few years. One of the most difficult aspects I've personally noticed about a plant-based lifestyle is getting enough protein. So, starting off, I'll talk about how I can get a whopping 45 grams of protein in just one sitting and enjoy every single bite. Okay everyone, the very first recipe I want to share with you is hands down my absolute favorite, and it's called Border Bowl Beans. To make this recipe, you're going to need a pressure cooker, three limes, sliced jalapenos, peanut oil, five cups pinto beans, and a blender. All right, so some of you may already be wondering, can I use a crock pot instead of a pressure cooker? And the answer is, it depends. If you're someone like me that'd like to start eating beans as a staple food, then you really need to invest in a pressure cooker. If you only want to eat them occasionally, then the crock pot isn't too bad of an option. Here's why. Beans are very high in a substance called phytic acid. Research has shown that this nifty little molecule can be a boon for blood vessel health, but like many things, too much of a good thing can start to cause problems. For guys, these problems usually start expressing themselves as lower testosterone and sperm production as zinc levels fall off, along with a host of gastrointestinal complaints. If you'd like to read more on phytic acid, I have included several resources in the description to this video. Also, if you'd like to see pressure cooking versus crock pot and how they stack up against one another, I've also included some links for those as well. The very first thing I do for my border bowl recipe is portion out five cups of pinto beans into a basin and then thoroughly rinse off any grime or dirt with some lukewarm water. I also use this opportunity to check for things like rocks which commonly end up in bags of beans by accident. Once I've given the beans a good rinse, I pour off the water and then dump the beans into my pressure cooker. Personally, I use an electric Instapot. Once all of the beans are in a stainless steel bowl, I fill the bowl to about the four liter mark with water and then I move on to using my blender. For the next step, I take three limes and place them in my blender cup, as well as a little bit of water just to help with the process. And I seal the lid and then get to blending. The end product will usually look something like this. I like to keep the mix a little chunky for texture later on. Then, I dump the contents into my pressure cooker, seal the lid, making sure the top valve is right in the middle, and then I set the cook for about 65 minutes. Just a quick word of warning. Since this is a high acid cook, make sure your pressure cooker is made out of stainless steel and not aluminum. Aluminum has been shown to pit and contaminate high acid meals. This is usually what the beans look like after they're done. As you can tell, nearly all the beans have burst and have a nice light brown color. With that step out of the way, I add the finishing touches. Once the cooking portion's out of the way, I go ahead and add about one to one and a half tablespoons of peanut oil, and then anywhere from about a third to a fourth of a cup of jalapenos. I mix it all together, and this is the final product. Mm. And that is my border bowl bean recipe. Mm. God, this is so good. Mm. My next recipe is a peanut oatmeal shake that I add a few slices of lemon. It's extremely straightforward and it just calls for one cup of peanuts, one cup of oats, and usually about three or four thinly sliced pieces of lemon. The reason why you need the lemon. Peanuts are naturally high in arginine, and arginine is a basic amino acid, which means that it's going to lend the nut a very bitter flavor, which is going to be a lot more pronounced whenever it's blended. That lemon really, really comes in handy. The real key to getting the absolute most of the shake, however, lies in two important steps. Step number one, since I use this shake as a dietary staple, I need to be extra careful of mold. Peanuts are grown underground, which means they're susceptible to a mold called Aspergillus flavus. This nasty little breed of mold produces a powerful biotoxin that can wreak absolute havoc on your health. The way to make sure these levels stay low is by first roasting. This is why most peanuts on the open market are dry roasted, since this method works best on a commercial level for reducing mold and its metabolites. Now, while roasting can do absolute wonders for any mold-related issues, 
I like to take an extra step and pressure cook around eight or so cups at a time in my pressure cooker for about 25 minutes with only an inch or so of water in the bottom. This method produces a lot of steam that kills off any mold or its metabolites roasting mist without reducing the nut's nutritional content by very much. Step number two, thorough blending. Nothing tastes worse than a chunky or a gritty shake. Don't be afraid to take your time with this step. As an added bonus on top of a better taste and experience, you're also going to increase the digestibility of your shake by a very, very large margin. After a thorough blending, you should have something that has a nice, rich, creamy texture. Mm. Oh, not a hint of grit. Well guys, I hope everyone enjoyed this week's video and that when you try my recipes, you love them just as much as I do. As always, I'm your host, Janice, signing off.